Today we are going to talk about the Grave Creek Mound, the Adena, and the Grave Creek Mound Stone, and probably some other stuff. What's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm the best Virginian. I bring you West Virginia history and travel videos from the Mountain State of West Virginia. And a few weeks ago, someone sent me a video about the Grave Creek Stone and how it's kind of one of the great hoaxes of early archeology. span Well, I thought uh, it's been a while since I've done a video about the Grave Creek Mound or really the Adena. So I thought I would revisit the topic and bring up some of the issues that I really didn't feel like they uh, confronted in their video. So the Grave Creek Mound is one of the largest earthen burial mounds in North America. Today the mound stands at about 62 feet tall with a diameter of about 240 feet. Originally the mound had a large uh, trench around the outside of it that's believed had some type of symbolism in the culture of the Adena people. And it's really one of those breathtaking places in West Virginia. When you look at the sheer size of it, the fact that this was built by hand uh, is really, really neat. And it's one of those places that people have been coming to for decades, centuries, I mean, probably even a millennia at this point, to just take in and really appreciate. It's just really cool place to visit. The structure is believed to originally be constructed by the Adena, or as some people call them, the Mound Builders for obvious reasons. In fact, the term Mound Builder has kind of grown on me in recent history since I learned that the term Adena was just applied to an entire culture of people. There was a guy in Chillicothe, Ohio that owned an estate that had a mound on it. It was the Adena Estate, and that term kind of just got applied broadly to all cultures that built mounds in North America. Now, these mound building peoples lived across modern day Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, and of course, West Virginia. Uh, the majority of these prehistoric sites being located along the Ohio Canal, Monongalia, and Potomac rivers. I've personally visited several Ohio River mounds uh, the Great Freak Mound, the St. Mary's Mound, and the New Martinsville, Ohio River Mound. It's in New Martinsville. It's at the bottom of the Ohio River. If that's something that you feel would interest you, uh, definitely check out this video I'm going to put right up here. I think I got the right direction this time. And if really this kind of weird history is something that interests you, you might want to subscribe to the channel because it's basically all I do here. So the mound builders had a pretty amazing culture. Uh, besides the mounds themselves, which were culturally and religiously significant to them, they had some forms of city planning. Obviously, it would take a very long time to build these structures by hand, so they had to have some type of permanent dwellings in order to construct these places over time. They also had agriculture, uh, trading routes, pottery, and they used the rivers uh, not just as a form of sustenance but also for transportation. The Adena culture would eventually come under attack by two enemies they never saw coming, those being industrialization and shoddy amateur archaeology. With the onset of industrialization, uh, rivers were super important for transporting goods from one place to another. The exact same factors that made these river valleys such great places to live for the early inhabitants in North America also made it great for individuals who were looking to get into industry. It's believed that hundreds if not thousands of mounds up and down the Ohio River were destroyed in order to make room for mills and factories. This was made even worse when low-lying areas were flooded by the West Virginia Dams Project uh, to make river boat navigation even easier. And even the former West Virginia State Penitentiary played a role in this because it's believed that hundreds, at least dozens of other mounds existed around the Grave Creek Mound, and a lot of them were destroyed to make way for the West Virginia State Penitentiary. The other threat that a lot of these mounds faced were the budding hobby of amateur archaeology. In 1838, two locals, Jesse Tomlinson and his nephew, uh, decided, you know what, it's a Monday, we have nothing better to do, let's start digging into the mound. 
Typically, there's a pretty blurry line in between archaeology and grave robbing. My rule of thumb has always been, if you don't have to worry about fighting the my rule of thumb has always been you have to properly and respectfully excavate, document, and preserve any artifacts or individuals you find within these places you're excavating. The Tomlinsons, on the other hand, dug three shafts into the mound and may or may not have filled in the ceremonial trench that once existed around the mound. They discovered two different burial vaults, an upper and lower vault, numerous shell beads, copper jewelry, and then gutted out the lower burial chamber and charged people admission to go into and visit the mound itself. Now, nearly a year after the initial excavation, they reported that they had found a stone tablet inside the mound that had a written language on it. This artifact would eventually become known as the Grave Creek Stone. To say that this artifact was controversial is an understatement. There has never been an artifact found that would connect the mound builders with having a written language. When the object started coming under scrutiny and more and more people wanted to look into it and research it, it seemingly disappeared at like the most convenient time for something like that to disappear. And this isn't even the only case of a controversial artifact like this just being lost. Um, in fact, it's not even the only case of this happening in the Ohio River Valley. So this account comes straight from McEldowney's History of Wetzel County. The McEldowney's had a mound on their property and they begun excavating it. Inside they found, and this is a direct quote from the history of Wetzel County, a golden image of an unknown god molded out of pure gold. This would have been a huge discovery, uh, both historically and financially. They just found a giant chunk of solid pure gold. But when professionals started looking into this claim, it disappeared. They just let some uh, Fenton McCabe borrow it, and the guy proceeded to just walk off the face of the earth, never be seen again. And the McEldownies, who assumingly had just lost a priceless artifact, really didn't bother looking for him that much. And the discovery of these revolutionary artifacts uh, were super common when amateurs were excavating these historic sites for their own personal clout. But when professionals started excavating these sites for historical research and preservation reasons, a peculiar thing happened. A lot of these controversial discoveries stop. If you read the Smithsonian Institution Bureau of American Ethnology Bulletin 151 Anthropological Papers Number 40 Exploration of an Adena Mound in Natrum, West Virginia by Ralph S. Sulky. Public domain, I'll link it down below. There were zero controversial artifacts found. There were some really neat stuff found, but nothing controversial that would completely rewrite history. And this is where this kind of starts getting annoying, and in the video I watched about the Grave Creek Stone, they really didn't cover at all. Stuff they found in this mound at Nadrum included an, an effigy of a bird, an effigy of a boat, 51 polished stones, four pipes or pipe fragments, 218 chipstone blades, 31 projectile points, 13 drills, 708 copper beads, a bear's tooth, and a worked piece of coal, along with a lot of other artifacts, but those were just kind of the things that jumped out at me. If these early controversial artifacts were so common when they were being dug up by amateurs that probably had no idea what they were doing, no type of formal training, and really didn't know what they were looking for and or at, don't you think when the professionals stepped in, they would have found even more of these artifacts? But seemingly, when the professionals stepped in, the discovery of these artifacts stopped. Today, the Grave Creek Mound is a great place to stop if you find yourself in Moundsville, West Virginia. It's right across the street from the penitentiary, literally two of the main reasons you will 
ever need to visit Moundsville, West Virginia, or right across the street from one another. The museum and the archaeological complex regularly rotates out other exhibits with other state museums, so if you come back every couple years, you're probably going to see some new things. Last time I was there, they had an entire exhibit dedicated to the Mark's Toy Factory, which at one point was in either Glendale or McMacken, West Virginia. They used to make big wheels in the Northern Panhandle, West Virginia. That's all you need to know, basically. The mound provides an excellent view of both Moundsville and the former West Virginia State Penitentiary. It's a little bit of a hike to get up to because it has this winding path that kind of goes up. But again, it provides really great views of Moundsville, West Virginia. So if you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything new, definitely uh, leave a like, share this video. And if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, this is basically all we do on this channel, cover weird and lesser talked about history, West Virginia history. And until next time, don't forget to stay wild, stay wonderful, and I'll talk to you later.